Welcome to the AACS Daily News for August 7, 2015. The Attleboro Arts Museum held the opening reception for their new exhibit last night. The show is called Eight Visions and featured the work from eight juried member artists. Attleboro Arts Museum director Mim Fawcett filled us in on the details. We are in the middle of the opening reception for Eight Visions. Uh, Eight Visions has a long history here at the museum. There used to be vision shows that would involve six artists, ten artists. A few years ago we landed on eight uh, and we are very pleased to present them here this evening. These are all member artists that have gone through an intense jurying process that started in December when they all exhibited in the members exhibition and then uh, around March, they all were picked by, um, actually they went through three different jurors to get picked for this show. We have tonight a ceramics artist, we have oil painters, we have um, mixed media artists, we have uh, quite a range here, watercolor, and the subject matter is very different too. We have some highly representational work that's really supreme. And then we have um, some conceptual work that deals with concepts of family, uh, physical issues. We also have history brought to life through our artist Peter Campbell, who has represented uh, Civil War era uh, portraits. For this show, I have two series. One is meditation, one is memory. I enjoy very much. This is the first time I join. And uh, I'm, I enjoy very much because eight people are uh, showing different work, so it makes the show very interesting. I like the space arrangement, just uh, everybody has its own space, but still like eight people look like a one, one show, but each one still have privacy, has still has own space. We will be running tours during the, uh, the course of the show, so if anyone is interested in finding out more about why the artists have done what they've done, they can call the museum, which is 508-222-2644. A few months ago, the Attleboro City Council approved a measure to join a community electricity aggregation program for the upcoming year through the electric supply company, Good Energy. The measure was first proposed by Attleboro City Council President Frank Cook, and we spoke with him to get an update on the status of the program. Hello, my name is Frank Cook. I represent Ward 3 in the City Council, and I also serve as the uh, President of the Attleboro Municipal Council. We all remember last winter, even though it is now a hot and humid uh, summer that we are going through. Uh, and as much as the, uh, the snow fell and it was so cold, it's now the exact opposite. But one of the things that, uh, in addition to all the snow and the cold, that we all remember is the higher energy costs of last year. As you know, National Grid had increased the electricity rates by greater than 30 percent. Uh, I was among several councils who would gotten calls about that particular matter. And I was uh, among those uh, who was very concerned about trying to uh, deal with this. And in working with the administration, we were able to work with uh, Good Energy as well as the regional planning district known as Serpet uh, to develop a program in which we would join with other communities to purchase electricity. There's a public hearing being held uh, before the state at the end of August in which more details of this will be going forward. We are hoping that in the fall we will have more information about a plan that's going to uh, hopefully lower everybody's electricity costs for a given period of time, be a uniform rate during that, uh, that time period. One of the things that concerns myself, as well as other members of the council, uh, is that uh, we've received reports of uh, people going door to door um, selling different energy products, in particular solar. Now, I have nothing against solar, but uh, some of these uh, people are apparently misrepresenting, or in some cases perhaps even confusing people, relative to the fact that this is part of the good energy or the city's plan. That is not true. That is totally separate entirely. And that has also led to some of the concern that a number of residents have presented to councils relative to hawkers and vendors coming door to door without proper uh, license. There's nothing pending before the council in that matter, but it is something that the council, I anticipate in the future, may very well be looking at. As far as the good energy and the uh, reduced energy costs, um, we expect in the fall further information to be available. And at that time, there will be an official mailing coming out from the city to all the residents so that they will have a better information about this and be able to be able to uh, make a, uh, an informed decision. That's it for today's update. For AACS News, I'm Austin Ricketts.